Hello everyone and welcome to this session which is focused on digital twins and how we can optimise business outcomes. I'm Rob Charlton and I'm Chief Exec of Space Group and at the beginning of this year Space Group launched a new platform called TwinView which is a cloud-based digital twin um, specifically focused on the built environment. So our thoughts are, and what I want to talk about today, is that twin is the new BIM. And when I say that, um, I say that with a slight tongue-in-cheek. Um, the reason being that um, probably 10, 15 years ago, this wedge um, was used everywhere to talk about BIM, and there was a lot of hype and a lot of debate and discussion about BIM. However, um, at the beginning of that process, we didn't really understand why um, we were using BIM. Um, but we were keen to explore the reason for it um, and the value we could bring to our clients. And I think over the last 10, 15 years, we've started to be able to understand that and we've proven the value of BIM. Um, so we knew that it could improve quality, it increased predictability, um, but then reducing risk and reducing costs. However, we're in a similar state potentially with digital twins, much hype, much discussion, um, this is the equivalent um, image that everyone uses instead of the wedge. Um, this is GE's engines um, for digital twins. And there's a lot of talk about them, but what we don't know is the why and what is the problem we're trying to solve. So what I want to do is try and explain some of that and our thoughts at TwinView and how we can um, uh, resolve that. So as with everything, the definition is all important. Um, but from our perspective, um, we're, we're less bothered about the definition and more what it does. But our definition that we've been using is a digital twin, is a digital representation of the physical, which improves business outcomes. And I think the bit where we differ is it's the improved business outcomes, which is important. Why do we have digital twins? And there has to be a reason. And then what are the problems we're trying to solve? So the question is, how do we apply this technology to deliver value and achieve better outcomes for our clients? So what are the things we can actually do? So we can start off, maybe touch a little bit on the industrial internet and the, the changes that we've seen um, over the last few years that have made this technology possible and has helped the construction and property industry digitize. So looking at the challenges we face, um, global Productivity growth um, 20 years ago was around 4%. Um, our productivity has gone down more recently, so our productivity is, is diminishing, and that is a challenge in an industrial environment. So um, when we look at where we are with the future, the industrial internet um, is moving forward, and a big thing that's helping with that is the internet of things and the devices that are now available. They're very affordable, accessible, um, and with uh, the internet and the speed of that, it makes it very possible. So some stats that we've come out with, um, the number of, of these internet of things devices is 22 billion, and that was in 2018. And the predicted revenue um, for this year is around $25 billion. And going forward to 2025, the economic value is around 11 trillion. So the growth you can see is huge and the internet of things linked with digital twins is where the potential lies. So if we link that digital and industrial, we have productivity and growth. So just giving an overview of where um, some of the other industries have been. So this airplane at the top um, was where they were over 50 years ago, whereas now, we see aeroplanes which are like flying computers, incredibly sophisticated. Many of them fly themselves, have safety systems, and some might say um, maybe too uh, clever. But we have made progress in our sector, but um, this, we're still somewhere behind um, other industries. So um, in New York, this building, 1931, um, was built and some really progressive construction but inside in the systems um, were fairly simple and actually um, it was a, a naturally or it is a naturally ventilated building. Moving forward to 2014, this is the Freedom Tower 
um, which actually is a high tech building full of systems um, and is really clever and is um, getting to be as clever as, as the aeroplane. However, whilst we've got lots of systems, we're just not connecting the dots of all of those systems. We're not bringing them together and we're actually not using that data intelligently. The challenges that we face going forward, um, carbon is a big issue for new generations such as the millennials and Generation Z. It's very important to them and particularly in the buildings because buildings um, are one of the biggest users of energy and um, producers of carbon. So the opportunity we have, we have lots of this data, so what if we could make our properties dynamic, which are continu continually learning and adjusting to the environment they are in and the people that use them. At the moment, buildings, as soon as we hand them over, start to deteriorate um, and we tend not to optimise and we tend not to look at how we can improve them as they operate over the 50 years of their lifestyle, lifetime. So if we look at cars, um, the original Mini um, was fairly, fairly analog and um, had its service every 10,000 miles, whether it needed or not. The new Mini uh, manages um, the data all the time and can tell you if you need your service in 10,000 miles or would it be better to do it in 3,000 miles or 12,000 12, miles. The, the car itself analyzes that. It can be connected to call center, where they can um, identify any challenges you've got with the car or if you have an accident, they're straight on the phone because they know you've had an accident. So some really clever technology in cars. So what makes this possible for the construction industry and property? Um, why can we do it now when it wasn't, it wasn't possible 10 years ago? So now we have the BIM models that we've been delivering for the last 10 years. The, the internet is very accessible, very, um, very fast. We've got 5G coming along on board. Um, there are many IoT devices, as I've mentioned, and they are very low cost. And we've also got cloud, cloud computing, which again is accessible um, and very, very cheap. Um, and that together allows you to deliver a digital twin. So are digital twins a, a reality? And uh, we believe they are in construction and property. Um, TwinView, we launched earlier this year, as I said, and this is a cloud-based platform which allows you to access all of the data and intelligence. Um, and we think this is a, um, an excellent opportunity to, to um, develop the dynamic performance of our buildings. We have four modules, which is great, and it's great for viewing the, the, the information. It's got a facilities management platform, but we importantly connect to IoT devices. And then it, what's really exciting about that and what's going to become more prevalent in the years ahead is that using that data, we can predict how the building is going to be used, which means we can optimize um, the performance and predict the maintenance that we're going to need using machine learning. And that's where we see um, us going in the years ahead. So going back to where we started, what is the value of a digital twin? Well, we think a digital twin can allow a building owner um, to have early warning of something going to happen in relation to their building. Even better than that, as we get more sophisticated, we can predict that problem and then ultimately that allows us to optimize it and improve the performance of the building in its own right. And then ultimately the challenge that we're trying to fix is we are reducing costs and buildings have become more and more expensive to run and we're reducing carbon because we're using less energy. So to finalize, we need to be smart and connect the dots and the future for property in the years ahead is really exciting and we're gonna see some very different buildings in the future. Thank you.